What is good, everybody? Welcome here to WrestleMania Superstore. We're here at WrestleMania 39. I have Mattel's design team with us. We have Bill McKenna and Steve Ozer, action figure attack, here to cover all of the epic WWE action figures. What's going on, guys? Oh, man, it's a long weekend, but it's always one of the best weeks of the year. I love the energy here, and I love being able to uh, interact with all our fans and the people that support our line and, and spend hard-earned money on our product. It's very, uh, it's kind of flattering in a way to being able to, to meet with everyone. Absolutely. Yeah, we're here at you know the WrestleMania Superstore and it's it's one of two major highlights of the year for us along with San Diego Comic-Con because we get to be here with you guys the fans the collectors and interact and you know it's so rewarding for us so you know we're happy to be back doing this absolutely absolutely the first thing we have here guys is the WCW Nitro stage crowdfunding project and it's massive it's massive the only thing that I can tell people is first of all you need to back it we need to reach 5,000 backers at least whatever we get after that is bonus for me but I just think it's massive I think you guys did a fantastic job on the stage itself that's my favorite part at least and I, I just think it's huge that's the, the one thing that comes to my mind when I look at it is just it's massive yeah definitely we wanted to recreate it as close to like the real scale as possible and to do it though it's a big footprint but we didn't want to compromise we knew if we if we were gonna put this out as a crowdfund like the people want this at to recreate, you know, 99% out of 100% of what they saw back in the day, and I think we've done that with what we got here with the uh, man. There's like these light displays. I mean, we we the the people that program the light displays like they studied old nitro tapes and segments to make sure that the the lights and the colors and the sequencing matched exactly. Wow. And I think, yeah, I, th I think when you think of nitro. Maybe you don't think of like sig signature light sequences, but they actually were. And like, you know, I'm, I'm a longtime fan and I consider myself like a super nerd of wrestling, but I didn't even realize that they were like, look at this, Ric Flair's are specific. Hogan's are specific and I was like wow they really are so they programmed them into this stage so one question I have is what made this character selection specifically like what went into picking these characters in these looks specifically? we wanted to, to get like a wide variety of, of people you know we knew there was some people that were into like the cruiserweights some people that were into like the Hulk, Hulk Hogan when he first came some people that came you know stalwarts Diamond Dallas Page NWO was represented by Big Papa Pump. And then for like the final stretch goal, we thought like, let's throw out like a real wild card. And we thought like, you know what? Debut Ultimate Warrior. I don't know if a lot of people would have would have um, seen that coming. And it's one of those like, you don't see it coming, but when you see it, you're like, it's it, it translates into a figure so well. It's like, we have to unlock that. So that was his thought, thought, at least that was my thought process when I was like, you know, back and forth about the figures. Like these are why, these, these are the choices that make sense for this. Yeah, and you think about that warrior figure back in the the Jacks days, like that was a 105 figure, you know, and now you can get an ultimate edition version of that 105 sought after figure, which is really rad. And I think, you know, to Bill's point, like you have like a selection of talent here who represents, you know, what WCW was all about. You know what I mean? You do have Warrior coming in for that cup of coffee when he was in WCW. You have Ray representing the cruiserweights, which is what made Nitro so special for so many people. You know? And you have that, like, the homegrown talent in, in Scott Steiner and Diamond Dallas Page, you know? And, you know, we, we saw, you know, comments on, on uh, deco choices, gear choices. It's like, it doesn't mean they're not going to come later, right? But, you know, there's a version of them here. Um, and who knows what happens later? We have a Monday Night War line coming, right? So it's like, you know, they totally could appear at a later date in that line. So right here we have the Greatest Hits Series number two, I'm presuming here. We got Undertaker, DDP, Shawn Michaels, Blue Tista, Harley Race, and Seth Rollins. Now, I know a lot of people have already, I've gotten DMs, I've gotten messages, I've gotten all kinds of comments. Everybody wants to know what went into the cash-in Seth Rollins. I know it's a, it's a Toys R Us exclusive and it's being redone. Since this figure has come out, you know, we've seen multiple upgrades to Seth Rollins. We've seen, you know, newer, uh, the new formula with the new legs are bigger. The kick pads are sculpted differently. Um, even we've seen, we've seen smaller briefcases that are more accurate. I know my people that were following my thing want to know what specifically went into choosing the exact same formula, the exact same, was it even possible to take an elite, you know, 93 Rollins or top talents Rollins and fix him up in this gear or something of that nature? Sure, I'll explain a little bit more in depth about the Greatest Hits line. It is meant to be 
carry forward figures. It's not new development, like that's inside, right? Like there's really only so much humanly possible of making new things. So if you see a figure in this line, it's no new development or very little, right? The arms of course are upgraded and you know, the true effects is upgraded because that's our standard now. That's what we do for everything. But you're not gonna see like us redoing a whole formula for one of these figures. Could we go back? and redo Seth in this look later from scratch if we wanted to? Yes, that might happen, but you won't see that in Greatest Hits. No, he, I mean, he said basically all that needs to be said. If we, if we were gonna, if we corrected it, it would be a, like a whole new figure from scratch, and then, then it would be outside the, um, the, 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 the marching orders yeah. for what the, uh, the, 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 the re-release line, the Greatest Hits line is supposed to be. For sure, for sure. I got you. Well, guys, there's your answer. Heard it from the horse's mouth. It's a, it's more of a, it's supposed to be a straight up, it's, it's kind of a, a re-release line. Yep. So there you go. Yep. Also up here we have Elite Series 102 Gunther. I almost said Walter, still getting used to that for whatever reason. Um, I wanted to ask, is this a new torso mold? It is, yeah, it's brand new tooling on him to, to represent the fact that Gunther's jacked. He is jacked. Like he did not come into WWE jacked, but he, uh, he's been, he's been uh, you know, staying away from Raising Cane's and Whataburger and all the restaurants I like to go to. Yeah, there you go. Um, he is much better self-controlled than I do, and he's also been, you know, doing a lot more of the uh, the push-ups and the sit-ups that I do. But uh, yeah, it's um, we want to make sure that if you had the previous ringside exclusive Walter figure and you put it next to each other, it's not just a repaint. Like it's 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 brand new development. For sure, I think it looks beautiful. I think it represents him pretty much perfect to a T. I'd say it's a brand new. I know a lot of people use the Mean Mark Callis Legends figure and they were uh, using the ringside exclusive legs, popping that on there and kind of using that as their Gunther. So now they have a more accurate torso to uh, represent that. So I think that looks awesome. All right, so down here we have WWE Elite Series 103. Now, a lot of people, especially on my channel, they'll know that I have talked about the Elite 81 Angelo Dawkins and how um, we felt that he was too large. He was too big, his torso was too big, the shorts mold with the long shorts really like interfered and it looked kind of, you know, with Cena, we're used to his, you know, long jorts, but having the basketball shorts and they were kind of, they were bulky, you know, it kind of looked weird with the torso or whatever, you know, but here I think you guys have done an incredible job. It looks better than I would even imagine the gear selection, uh, the cloth goods, jersey here. Uh, I think this this honestly might be one of the MVPs of the weekend, even with everything we've shown off. I think it's honestly also one of my favorite things we've shown this weekend because I know a lot, another one is Angelo Doc is another guy like he he was on the the Gunther treatment where his, he is he's he's trimmed up, he's fit up, like he's wrestling without the she used to wrestle with the torso covered. Now he's wrestling, you know, without a torso cover, and you, it, you, the results are on TV, and you know it should be rewarded. You know, I I wanted the figure to be. Uh, closer to what he looks like now, so I didn't want to reuse a lot of existing parts. And also when they came out with like the basket, I, Street Province is something I've wanted to get back in the Elite line, but I didn't want it to be like just like a color variation. So when they came out with like the basketball inspired outfits, it's like, okay, now that now we're putting them back in the line because those are going to be kick-ass figures. And I, I think they have come out pretty much close, like as, as good as I thought they'd come out. This is how, you know, they've, 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 they look like how I thought about they, they would look in my mind. And is this this Angelo Dawkins? It's this is the main head sculpt, correct? Yes. Like, okay, so it's screaming expression figure then. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we got LeBron. I'm guessing Angelo wears the jersey for LeBron, and then Montez wears it for Kobe. Um, I haven't seen a shot of the back of the figures. Do it, does it have the back uh, logos as well, or is it a Velcro? Yeah, yeah. It's it's got both their individual names on the back. Awesome. That's beautiful. I think this this pairing right here is the jersey actually very stretchable, so you can pull it down over the top of the figure. So there's no Velcro whatsoever. On these, no, because I really did want to get between the pinstriping and the, the the name on the back. Like that was really in, integral to the soft good. So sometimes you include the Velcro and remove the logo on the back because it's a lot easier to get that on and off a figure. But you do lose some of the um, the accuracy. And sometimes with the logo, like a Stone Cold T-shirt, with like the front is as important as the back. Then you try to like play around with the material you use to, and it takes a little more effort to get it on. So it's always a trade-off. For sure, for sure, for sure. I think, like I said, this right here really blew me away. I think th these are probably two of my favorite figures. And then over here, I always said for a long time that I wanted to see a uh, WrestleMania 32 Dusty Stardust, and here we have it. I don't know what the deal is. People were saying that you know Cody doesn't like to mention Stardust and this and that and the other and. Uh, that's obviously not that true. We got a Stardust Elite and it looks amazing. Yeah, so the, the backstory on this figure is we had Cody with us for San Diego Comic-Con last July. 
and Robert Rudman and I pitched him on Stardust on the way down from the panel to our booth. And Robert like was like, my kids love it, and like really like laid it on thick, and Cody was like, you know what, it's okay. And he kind of gave us the green light right then and there that it was fine to move forward with Stardust. And you know, we gave him some selections of what we wanted, and in our hearts we all wanted this dusty stardust absolutely um, so he, he agreed and, he, and here we are and you know tonight maybe you know maybe this isn't the only stardust maybe we'll see later tonight okay 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 and this uh, we saw in elite series it was either 99 or 100 we saw two chase figures was it 99 elite 99 we saw two chases uh, do any of these lines feature two chases no <laughs> You're stumping us. We make so much, you know, yeah, obviously. So much going through the system at one time. Yeah, I mean, things like tag teams in, in Legends, for instance, right? Like, you know, we did the SST as chases. You know, things like that make a lot of sense for it. And sometimes it's it's opportunistic, or, and sometimes it's like we really just need to do it, right? Um, so nothing that I can think of at the moment duplicating that, but, you know, we're open to doing it again. So right here we have the Monday Night Nitro set, is what, or not the Monday Night, the Monday Night Wars Elite Wave. So that'll be the new name of the wave going forward after Ruthless Aggression ends. Monday Night War. Monday Night Wars Elite's down here. In this line, is it going to be one line WCW? Is it going to be one line, or is it going to be a mixture of both, or how are we looking at that? Yeah, so each wave will have two WWE superstars and two WC, what do they call them superstars in WCW? Two WCW superstars and uh, a Build-A-Figure. So the Build-A-Figure for Wave 1 is Lex Luger when he jumped ship uh, and appeared on the first episode of Monday Nitro. And then we will alternate for the Build-A-Figures between WWE and WCW. So the following wave will have a WWE Build-A-Figure. Um, so it's gonna be even throughout the year. Um, and the same thing goes for the Ultimates. It'll be one WCW Ultimate and one WWE Ultimate. And we're gonna do something really fun with the packaging. The, um, the packaging will have the appropriate logos of the companies as well. And we want to, and it's not approved yet, but we want to put the dates on the packaging. So you can actually recreate a timeline of events of WCW and WWE and recreate the Monday Night Wars literally bookshelf style if, if you'd like to do that. Is this, this isn't the Build-A-Figure, is it? This Lex is, this Lex is the Build-A-Figure, yeah. So this is our first, I think, bare torso shirtless Build-A-Figure. So, you know, there was questions yeah, the questions recently of, you know, can we get non-suited Build-A-Figures? And yes, we're, we're doing them. Very good, very, very good here. Is this the new Hulk Hogan torso right here that is featured right here? It is. Uh, Bill developed a new torso that is perfectly appropriate for WCW and beyond Hulk Hogan's. Um, so this is the de debut here. Um, and, you know, I've seen some of the initial reaction. It seems to be positive. So, yeah, we're happy. For sure. It's actually, I'm kind of disappointed in myself because I am usually one for parts choices and zooming in on it and being like, is that news that, you know, and I complete. I guess it's because, it, you know, it's got the gray uh, primer over or whatever. And I completely missed it until I went home and I was laying there, or not home, but you know what I mean. I was laying there and I went back at photos and I said, oh my my goodness, that is the new torso. So I, uh, I'm i disappointed in myself for not noticing it earlier, but it looks good to me. I think it looks good. Do you have any? Yeah, I mean, it. look, it was something that the, the, the fans requested and we we're always have our ear to the ground. It's just because if you don't see something right away, there there might sometimes be reasons for that beyond just we don't care about, you know, we don't they don't care about the fans. No, there's, there's reasons why something may not happen as immediately as you wanted to. Hopefully it's because we're making decisions that, you know, allow other things to happen before, but like something like this when we were designing this 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 way, it made sense like okay, for this, let's let's do this in here because this is where we're going to get the most impact when when we do that and when we when we you know, devote the tooling dollars to that. It's a whole new fresh year. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you ask me something mid-year, maybe that tooling budget is already allocated and we can't do any, anything about it. So, you know, fresh year, fresh start, tooling, and we were able to, to, you know, do it up here. New head on the Hulkster, new head on Undertaker, new accessory, fun accessory for Stone Cold Steve Austin, new Build-A-Figure parts, new head on Luger. So, you know, a lot of newness in the Monday Night War line. That's beautiful, and also, with the addition of the Hulk Hogan torso, I'm guessing pre we've gotten a lot of Hogans over the last year and a half. Is it possible that we're going to see a lot more Hulk Hogans that we've already seen, but with the updated skin tone and formula or torso? I wouldn't it keep selling. Yeah, I wouldn't rule it out. <laughs> yeah, yep, for sure. It makes sense. Makes sense for business. So start. 
start getting those Mr. Americas and stuff on, on eBay. So right here we have a look at the Series 20 for the Legends Wave. Kind of wild that we've seen 20 series of the Legends Wave. I mean, it's creeping up there. That's longer than some lines existence, period. So I see here, you got Greg the Hammer Valentine. He's got newly sculpted legs. I could see uses of that in the future for more talent. And I had a question on Ted DiBiase. I'm guessing he is the chase figure in the set. And will he come with both head sculpts or is it gonna be a one and Yes, he one? comes with both head sculpts. Okay. So you can have old man Ted in the white, you can have old man Ted in the well, green, call, or vice versa. NXT era Ted. Okay. <laughs> NXT Ted. We got NXT Ted. And then this Mr. Perfect, I'm guessing this is the same feature we saw with the ringside exclusive Undertaker. Yeah, well let, let's talk about Ted real quick. I saw comments on the white suit with the million dollar title. As you know, we can't change accessories out for our chases. It's just a deco change only. So that's why he has the million dollar title rather than the tag title, because the green is the standard, right? So we know, but you gotta make compromises sometimes. Right? I mean, who's gonna hate on having a million dollar title? I mean, we, we've seen the tag titles in other lines. We could easily, you know, we could. You can give it to your old Virgil figure, right? There, there you go, there you go. Toys R Us exclusive, RIP. Uh, and then Mr. Perfect, you know, something that the, the title is unfortunately obstructing here is Bill fine-tuned that fit of the singlet top uh, around the pelvis. So it looks really nice. So, you know, once we get some more photos of this, uh, we'll show you, you know, like how that actually looks. Um, and it, it is much improved over the, the Undertaker version. Perfect. I know a lot of people were asking about that. I've seen people, you know, rumbling about it. And, and people were wondering what it does look like underneath. Obviously, we don't have a photo of it just yeah, yet or I mean, whatever. Well, it's not there to hide it. It's, it's because <laughs> it's just it's a great pose for him. Like he wasn't with someone that like slung the belt over his shoulder when he got into the ring. Like he wore it like like a true champion should. So. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And then uh, down here on the Ruthless Aggression Elites, we've we've covered the uh, you know the Rated R stuff. You know they were unable to put the Rated R Superstar. I'm sure you've seen rumblings online about that. Would you like to address that any or you know what? Obviously it's out of your hands most of the time on stuff like that. But uh, can you touch on that? I mean you know Bill Bill wanted to do it. Right? Like Bill wants accuracy, but sometimes you can't. You know, like, you know, I can put whatever I want on my t shirt and wear it, but it doesn't mean I can sell merch. Right? It doesn't mean I can sell merch of it. ProWrestlingTees.com slash my damn toys. Um, so, you know, we get it, and it's just, it's unfortunate, right? So we make it as close as we can. And Bill is really good about if, if he can't do something, leaving it blank or leaving space, because there's great customizers out there and you can you can fix it up pretty easily. Yeah, I mean that is always my philosophy or is I would prefer to to not have it than to have like 50% version of it. So, a lot when they say instead of like doing different lettering on the sides, it's like someone I'd rather leave that space open for someone to go back and add on themselves. Like if we can't do it for what one reason or another, we don't want to stop you from being able to uh, do what we can. For sure, for sure. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it used to not be a thing. That used to not be a thing. You've had rated R Superstar on previous, I, I want to say basics, and it may have been on the Hall of Fame Elite. Yeah, there have been some, but things change and evolve. I mean, like we, we couldn't do gobbledygooker for the longest time, and then we could again. So, you know, for now, we, we can't. I mean, that's the way of the world sometimes. Uh, going down to MVP here, he's in black for the... I guess third time now in this kind of outfit. We had the Elite One and then we had the Elite Nine without the sleeves. What specifically made you guys choose the black and silver over maybe uh, one of his other Ruthless Aggression attires or what have you? I've just always personally liked that item. I always thought that was the item when MVP looked most like, you know, an MVP. In. Like I think some of the earlier suits were a little too like the first one, like the purple. I just I was get I got I always got like uh, Barney the Dinosaur vibes on it. So it's like it's it's a it's a it'd be a nice different color, but I think like the graphics uh, on this one are so different from um, what we've done before, and it really it's really sharp and stands out. So I wanted to make sure that you know when the opportunity came, like this was I thought this was the uh, this one would translate the best into a figure. And, and um, there may have been a little talent preference involved too to steer away from certain things okay, <laughs> okay. that makes sense i mean hey you know if he doesn't want it he doesn't want it but i love it i think the elite one mvp is one of like you know especially for so early on in mattel's process i think it's one of the like most detailed you know you got the headband the chains the all that stuff like that so i, I think it does hold up pretty well considering it's almost like she's like 13 years old now which is kind of frightening to think about but yeah i mean it look mvp gives you a lot of cool looks uh he translates well into a toy so as long as you're able to accurately recreate what he puts out what what we put out is going to look good and then the miz here he hasn't 
we haven't seen him like this since Elite Series 3. He looks good. Well, it, is he going to come with a chick magnet shirt? Is he going to have any additional accessories, or is this kind of what we're thinking here? And does the t does the steel chair come with him this or is based the MVP? On his first ever action figure okay. from previous manufacturer. So it's sort of like what what was included on there. Sort of like how like a, some of the that's why Batista had a lamp. Yeah. So that's why instead of like a chick magnet T-shirt or something like the original one came with a with a folding chair. So we're gonna we're gonna do a, a callback to that. That that's actually right. I I'm dumb. I forgot that that's that's how the the thing went. And so there, there's some cool newness on Miz, right? Like the gloves, I think, are new. Yeah, he does have like brand new tooling on the fingerless gloves because his gloves are cut off at a different. Like, he doesn't like they're cut off like at this knuckle instead of like at like the biker gloves, which are cut off uh, higher up on the the glove. And he also has the suspender parts, which is which is brand new for that. And there was there was a comment recently, I think, on the boards about like gloved hands, right? And like doing more of them. So yes, we're constantly adding new gloved hands to the repertoire, the tooling bank. I think it looks great. It uh, yeah, I think he even has like it. Can, yeah, yeah, got the hat on there. I think he's fully finished there. He looks great. All right, guys. So now here we are looking at a lot of new Ultimate Editions. I was actually blown away by the number of Ultimate Editions. I mean, I woke up at 4 a.m. at the airport. I'm seeing this two pack up on the internet. And then I get here and y'all have revealed, it seems like 50 new Ultimate Editions. I mean, this whole case is full of Ultimate Editions that we really don't even have in hand yet. Besides, I know some people are finding this today, actually. So, but um, everything looks great. Uh, Thornton up here. I had a question. I couldn't tell if that's the Rick Rude torso or not, or is that a different torso? On Randy? Yes. I believe it is the Rick Rude torso, yeah. That's great. That's a perfect selection, I think. And I'm guessing his tattoos will be up on like his uh, torso area. Yeah, he, he's got full tattoos, and including the, um, the, yeah, this is the first factory sample, and they actually printed it up here, so that's, I mean, it helps that the, we did this to show off the jacket, but it does help hide the fact that the original placement had, it has to be adjusted, and it will be adjusted for final production. I'm sure people would have given you a lot of crap online if, if it was shown off, they would say, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. They, they would have caught it, but it's like, I already caught it too, so it's already like, it's, you're never going to see, yeah, yeah, yeah. you I know. Mean, uh, up right until something ships you can see changes right so when we show you things and i mean it, who knows what's going to change on it right when you see a deco sheet things can change so you know that's one where bill's going to improve it right down to the wire perfect perfect and then coming down here we have ruthless aggression ultimates this is right in my wheelhouse this is things that i've asked for for years uh, i've made graphics about this figure specifically talking about it i had people asking me or wanting to ask you know where they wanted to know where the ecw championship was why didn't that wasn't included was the money in the bank briefcase on the table his airbrush money in the bank briefcase i mean i think everything was on the table it's just he's expensive Ray was expensive. Like this was an expensive grouping, right? And we kind of lumped them all together, like, and and did an average for cost. And Brock helped. Eddie helped a little. Brock helped a little more. It's like you can only afford so much, unfortunately. Um, so I mean, to me, the beauty with Ultimates is you're meant to open them, right? And we will release all those things, you know, individually, and you can add them to him. But it's like we we maxed out what we can do with RVD at that price point. On this Brock Lesnar, which specific gear is this going to be in? It is the one with the, the tailbone on the back. Interesting. That's a good attire. Uh, I think that we've seen that a few times now in elite form. Yeah, he, he really did not mix up his gear looks during this period. I think it was blank trunks, skull trunks, and tailbone trunks. Yeah, he, had the, he had what, like the chains on his debut or something like that. I don't yeah, know if that would work that, for an ultimate. I wouldn't do that. For, I mean, I've seen that too, but for an ultimate, like no one, I don't think anyone thinks like the ultimate version of Ruthless Aggression, Brock Lesnar, should be that one time he showed up first time with chains on the side of the gear they never wore again. So it's for, like, for sure. Something that we, you know, might show up somewhere somewhere else as like a you know like a nice like you've got we've done everything else like we're we're doing the chains but not not for an ultimate bird. for sure for sure i think i can agree with you there i think you know they're completely sizable uh for ray mysterio i'm guessing the entrance gear here that's the main accessories right i mean it's a recreation of the entrance grates um i don't think i own the original entrance grates is this the exact same tooling or is this all, all completely brand all yeah it's all new too i mean if i mean if you look at it compared to each other like it's light years beyond the first and i was happy with the the first light year version i was like do we need to retool and then i looked at something it's like yeah we should probably retool you, this you pitched this to me when we first started ultimates as reusing the original and then i don't i don't think i grasped that you were gonna go all out with this with the new tooling and when i saw it i was blown away yeah. and then you look at it and it's it, the old one was just flat right yeah. no no sculpted detail for all this stuff so it, it it's light, like you said, light years beyond and, and so impressive to see, especially when you look at both of them side by side. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap up my interview with the Mattel design team with Bill McKenna and Steve Ozer. Thank you guys so very much for watching. 
Uh, be sure to back the stage, back the Nitro stage. Had a lot of fun out here. It's been a truly unforgettable experience. I want to say thank you to these guys. I appreciate them so much for everything y'all do. Uh, thank you so much for, I mean, without them, my channel probably wouldn't even be possible. So I appreciate you guys so much. Thank, thank you. you for, and thank you for the interview. Thank you, man. And, nice to meet you. Yes, sir. All right, guys, so that is my full interview with Steve and Bill. We were going to pick it back up, but then, like, the, the weekend got really, really hectic, and I was unable to, like, get a formal, like, outro and, like, all those different things, man, so I do apologize for that. However, it was a ton of fun to go out there and just interview those guys, you know, really surreal moment because, you know, I've talked about it here on the channel. I want to go out there with the MDT microphone, get an actual interview in there and all those different things. Hopefully, we can make it happen at Comic-Con as well which would be in a few months, you know, maybe I can fly out there and do that again, and that would be really fun to do, you know, but just redo it all over again, but at Comic-Con, but I don't even know how the hell they're going to top this, you know, this felt like a Comic-Con level event, it was unbelievable how many freaking figures there were, I'm finally back home now after, and I'm editing all these videos and all those different things, but I wanted to get my interview with them up, I want to break down the figures, I got some collabs, I got the vlog, there's so many different things that I got to get done for the channel, so I do appreciate you guys, however, I do want to give a huge shout out to our new patrons if you guys are interested in becoming a patron member definitely go check it out link in the description below the fluffinator brian baker and action underscore customs 827 huge shout out to those guys for becoming new extreme division patrons or higher they are actually higher than the extreme division but new extreme division members and higher always get shouted out on initial sign up and then they do go into the everyday video shout out so huge shout out to those guys for becoming patrons appreciate you guys so very much but that is going to wrap up this video man thank you guys so very much for watching hope you guys did enjoy can't wait to edit together the vlog and just the different videos that we have going on from the trip to la and wrestlemania truly unforgettable man i have no words to describe how you know awesome the trip was and the experience was huge shout out to mattel for the invite out there to cover everything get to tour the mattel design center which is also a video coming we got some nice gifts that i'll probably do like a wrestlemania haul video breaking down everything that i got and all those different things man but i'm getting out of here thank you guys so very much for watching let me know what you thought down in the comment section below Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you next time.